Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Raya. If you are new here, and don't forget to click the subscribe button down below so you can join my little family here in YouTube. I do beauty tutorials and reviews occasionally if I have the time and money to do so. But yeah, granted, this channel is all about makeup and beauty. So today, I'm gonna try and attempt to do a successful three looks, one video featuring the holy grail OG status drumroll please Ta -da! Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance I figured I'm not gonna do a review style on this video I mean I still do because it's my first time trying it but it's not as in-depth as other videos are because this is not a new palette. It's actually very, very old. But I wanted to see how good it really is because it's very hyped up. And I wanted to see if it lives up to its claims because most beauty YouTubers consider this as holy grail palette. And I am really curious. This is actually... At the top of my wish list so we'll see how this goes and if this is really sublime magical perfection gosh am i ready am i ready am i ready okay this is the first time that i'm gonna play with this palette so bear with me this excitement is freaking me out. I already primed my eyelids with concealer and set it with powder. So the first thing that I'm gonna take is um, Golden Ochre and it's powdery. There is a lot of kickback so I'm just running that all over my lid just to have a nice um, skin tone base. Taking a little bit of this one, this is called Burnt Orange on the same um, fluffy crease brush that I've been using. And I'm just gonna start and build that crease up. I just swatched it off cam just right now and oh my god, the texture is on a whole new level. I've only been using Morphe eyeshadow palettes and um, the Soph and Makeup Revolution collab and it's my first time trying out a high-end eyeshadow palette and oh the rumors are true it's really really smooth to the touch very very creamy in fact and I don't know it just is on a whole new level and one tap of the brush like literally one tap the colors are already there the color payoff is amazing i'm gonna deepen that up by adding a little bit of raw sienna just on the outer v a touch of cypress umber that deep brown shade and just concentrate it on the outer corner the outer v of my eye i'm just fluffing it on the outer v section then bringing it close to my lash line inwards great now for the lid shade i'm gonna take a little bit of primavera right here with my finger it's so smooth and buttery and i'm just gonna put that on my lid and then with an angled brush i'm just gonna take cypress umber again this one here and use that as my eyeliner and i'm gonna pinch my brush and run it along my lower lash line And then I'm gonna take Vermeer on a detailed brush and put that on my inner corner. That is the final look, you guys. I just made it very, very simple and appropriate for daytime and then paired it with a neutral brown. 
orange lip shade so yeah it's also appropriate for work and um i didn't put any false lashes on so that it won't overpower the overall look so i really really like this look especially for like casual days and just for every day actually so let's move on to look number two Okay, so for this next look, I plan it to be a little bit more cool tone. Still very appropriate for daytime. I'm gonna tap into Bon Fresco. This is a nice um, soft lavender shade that I think would be perfect for a transitioning shade if you want to create cool toned looks. In fairness, I'm doing my face first and there's absolutely no fallout whatsoever even though I didn't tap my brushes so the next thing that I'm gonna do is take a little bit of warm taupe and just build up the crease So I'm also using circular motions in the inner socket just to have that editorial look to it. Taking my ring finger, I'm gonna plunge into antique bronze. This lovely bronze shimmer shade that appears to have a little bit of pink undertones. I can't explain it but it's so pretty and I'm just pulling that all over the lid so I'm pressing the shadow all over my lid deepen up the look a little bit of cypress umber and gently pat it on the inner corner and I'm actually extending it outwards in a V shape angled brush to buff out the edges so I'm taking a smudger brush and I'm taking this shade right here and it's called love letter and this will be the star of the show and that's what I'm gonna use for my lower lash line going back with my crease brush taking a little bit of Bon Fresco and warm taupe and just buffing it along my lower lash line for my inner corner I'm gonna take a little bit of tempera it's actually not a shimmery shade it's just a matte um, cream color To complete off the look, I'm actually gonna tight line my eyes just to have a smokier effect both on my upper and lower lash line. So this is the second look and I completed it with a bit of half lashes on the outer corner parts of the eyes and this is actually a nice makeup look for those of you who have parties to attend to, especially runway parties, oh my god, this is such a classic runway makeup look. And it's also a bit more interesting because of the shade Love Letter on the lower lash line. So I hope that you like this artistic glam second look. Alright, we are down to look number three and this time my eyes are feeling very very um, tired because it's been my third time doing eye makeup. But yeah, for the third look, this is the final look so let's really take it all out. I'm gonna take burnt orange right here on a precise crease brush and use that to build up the transition shape so since we're doing a halo eye i'm kind of running it higher than i normally would so it's almost reaching the brow bone 
just to spice up that crease i'm going in with the shade real gar and i believe this is the first time that we're going to use this on this video and i'm just gonna put that lower than burnt orange i'm gonna take this shade called red ochre and put that on the outer and inner parts of my eye with a pencil brush lastly we're gonna take venetian red right here and deepen up the outer and inner corners it also helps if you raise your brows so that you can really deposit it in the innermost and outermost part of your eye going back with a little bit of burnt orange just to blend everything together i'm also running a little bit of venetian red on the lower lash line all right now we're ready to cut the center part of our lid to create that halo eye effect i'm using a flat brush and what i normally do is place it at the center of the lid that's where your pupil normally is and blink and as you can see it transfers up to my crease area and that's where i stop kind of laying down that halo eye I'm gonna use my pinky finger to tap that harsh edge and then using that same pinky finger I'm gonna take vermeer and place that on top of the concealer the shade Ooh, that's so icy I like it I'm actually gonna take a little bit of Vermeer and put that on the center of my lower lash line to establish that full halo effect. Then taking a little bit of Primavera and putting that on my inner corner. And very appropriate for special events. And I hope that you like this one too as much as I love the other looks that I have created with this palette and it's as you can see a halo eye this is the glam af look all right guys it's now time for my final thoughts on this product first off we go to the packaging indeed it's very luxurious very um expensive looking as you can see i have stains and smudges all over it and that's just from one use you cannot preserve the um purity and cleanliness of this product so that's very sad but overall it looks very very beautiful aesthetic and this is the kind of palette that you would want to have on your vanity all year long and as for the color scheme, this is very, very cohesive, very coherent. All of the shades that you can see here are very um, flexible and they can work well with each other. I can see now why a lot of people use this as their go-to palette because there's your warm neutrals, your cool tones, your pink tones, your orange tones, and all of that really works well together. And then, although the shimmers here are not really as foiled and metallic as I have expected them to be because of course these are high-end shadows, it's almost like comparable to Morphe shadows and Makeup Revolution shadows. However, I noticed that you only need like one swipe to get that shimmery effect as compared to other brands that I have tried before. So I guess that's a plus. And um, it's very, very creamy and blendable and smooth. Like I swear, if you can touch this one right now, oh, the particles, the powder particles are very, very finely milled. So 
it's really really smooth to the touch very buttery very creamy i don't know what to say it's a high-end brand and i get it now why a lot of people make anastasia beverly hills their go-to and favorite holy grail status palettes it's on it's not comparable to drugstore brands that I have tried. Indeed, it is a great level up from the other eyeshadow palettes that I've been using before. And I don't think I can go back to using that kind of um, formula. This formula is actually beginner friendly. Although there is a bit of a learning curve because these shadows are very much pigmented. The color payoff is insane. It's right there on the first um, application. So you might want to go with a very, very, very light hand. But if you've mastered that, then you can actually see how the shadows blend by itself perfectly. Unfortunately, I will not be able to comment on the longevity of this product because I'm gonna take this off. But most eyeshadows last long on me as long as I have concealer underneath or any eye primer, but usually I use a concealer. So I think longevity will not be an issue. And um, for the fallout, there's a bit of kickback once you dip into the pan as what i've been expecting because i have seen a lot of reviews and tutorials using anastasia beverly hills palette not only exclusive to this one they really have kicked back but i don't mind because again one tap is enough for your whole um crease work so i guess you can still save a lot of product the kickback is not a problem whatsoever at least for me and there are no visible fallouts while i'm doing my eyeshadow looks actually i've been doing my eye makeup last because i have like my foundation on and there is no crazy fallout whatsoever all in all i guess the quality justifies its steep price it's 2900 pesos in my sephora ph app and it's exorbitantly priced and i get it i i get why it's very expensive although i got this half the price 1700 pesos during a palette sale last june so i'm very happy about that and indeed it's a steal this has become my favorite favorite palette as of now hands down and uh, really high high-end eyeshadow palettes especially the Anastasia Beverly Hills is a great investment if you are going to be a professional makeup artist or if you just love makeup so much it, and as you can see from my three looks this palette is very much flexible so you can create a whole lot of different looks from daytime minimal looks to really glamorous looks such as this one and of course the color scheme is very flexible as i have mentioned earlier so i think you will get the most out of this palette whether it may be spring summer winter fall or wherever you are in the world or you just want a staple in your eyeshadow game then this palette is indeed og holy grail status yeah, I hope that you liked the video and I hope that you liked the looks. If you happen to recreate my looks, tag me in my Twitter and Instagram accounts. I would love to give you a shout out. And until then, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!